Hello everybody, welcome back to my shop. The resin printer market is full of competition saying that their machine is the best, but who's to say for sure? Elegoo's Mars 2 Pro is their premium model in the 6 inch category, and I'm not going to beat around the bush here. This is a very solid machine. In today's video, I'm going to unbox the printer, run through some of the functions, and print some test models. I will share my thoughts and experiences with you right here on Southpaw Workshop. I want to thank banggood.com for providing this printer for review. If you are interested in buying this printer, I will provide a link in the description below. Banggood has a wide selection of 3D printers and accessories, and if you are willing to wait for shipping, you can get a great price that can't be beat. Now, on to the review. This printer arrived in a box similar to all the other printers in this class or packaging. One small difference is that the box opens from the side, making removal of the contents a little bit easier and less cumbersome. In typical fashion, the vat and build plate are packed inside the printer, while the instructions, tools, and accessories are found in a box packed separately. In addition to the plastic bag surrounding the printer, the lid is also wrapped in an additional layer of cling wrap to protect from scratches or abrasion during shipping. Now that I've unpacked everything, let's take a look at what comes with this printer. You get an instruction manual, several filter funnels for straining resin, a rubber seal for the base of the printer lid, a small plastic device that helps drain resin off the build plate when a print is done, more on that later, a power supply, two extra FEP sheets, a plastic spatula, side cutters, a nice sharp putty knife, tools and spare screws, a whole wad of gloves, and the obligatory paper masks. Interestingly, my unit did not come with a USB stick, which I think is an error on Elegoo's part, since the manual specifically lists it as part of the accessory kit. Power plugs into the back, and the power switch is located right next to the power input. The vat is solid aluminum and appears to be well machined. After removing a couple of protective films, I'm ready to level the build plate. Oops, I forgot one last protective film. Now I'm ready to level the build plate. The build plate swivels on a ball joint. You loosen two screws to free the plate, then follow the instructions to properly set the Z height. Before printing, I wanted to do a couple more things. First, I attached the rubber gasket to the bottom of the lid. It actually helps muffle some of the fan noise, and I'm assuming it also helps contain the smell of the resin. I also checked to see if my backup resin vat from Soval fits, and sure enough, it does. Elegoo uses the same captive screw system as Anticubic, so that means I can use the Soval, Anticubic, and Elegoo resin vats interchangeably. A definite plus in my book since I own both Anticubic and Elegoo machines. Since my unit did not come with a USB stick, I have no test files from Elegoo to print, so I will turn to my usual test models that I have used in the past. This time I will try to print all three at the same time using the default settings for the Mars 2 Pro in Chittabox. I am using Anycubic standard gray resin for this test, and all the models took about 4 hours to print at 2.5 seconds per layer. When the print finished, I realized immediately that my Wood Elf model failed. I put the provided build plate angle mount to work, and it did a great job draining off the excess resin. Once the resin was done draining into the vat, I removed the finished prints and began post-processing them. Since I had a filled print, I figured it would be a good time to try out the clean vat function of the printer. I take an old piece of support material and place it into the vat. Then I select the clean vat function, set my time, and click next. The whole screen exposes the resin during this time, creating a sheet of cured resin that I can then peel off using the support material leaving a clean vat behind in the process. You can see the failed print I was able to retrieve from the FEP surface using this method, all without scraping the FEP surface or poking it from underneath. I'm pretty sure the print failure was due to an improperly leveled bed, so I leveled the bed once again and decided to print a bigger model that would take up the whole build surface. 
I chose this spider ham model from Dennis31470, which is a merged version of an original sculpt by Lee Jin on MyMiniFactory.com. I figured this would be a good test of whether I have properly leveled the build plate this time around. So let's have a look at the finished models. This is the best Amerilabs benchmark I have printed to date. Every single detail on this model printed with almost perfect clarity. I am seriously impressed as this is a difficult benchmark to print. And this one printed so well with default settings, well, that is very impressive. The Mandalorian printed really well, and the only flaws I can see are from me using dirty IPA to clean the model, and I wasn't very careful while removing the supports. All the detail is there, and the presence of layer lines is minimal. The Spider-Ham model is really fun, and there's a lot of very subtle detail in the costume. Everything printed out great, and the only issue is a tiny bit of detail loss on the underside of the model. I could orient the model better during printing to minimize that detail loss. Here is what I like about this printer. Useful accessories. This printer provided some very thoughtful and useful accessories. The build plate angle bracket is a great tool to reclaim every possible drop of precious resin from a finished print. They give you two replacement FEP sheets. Most of the time you're lucky if a manufacturer ships the printer with any spares at all. Two spares goes above and beyond and is greatly appreciated. They were generous with the amount of gloves and strainers provided in the package. It's almost like they don't want lack of supplies to get in the way of your printing experience, and I appreciate that. Build quality. The aluminum and steel construction of this printer definitely gives it a quality feel, and in my opinion contributes to its quietness and operation. The build plate and resin vat are also made of solid aluminum, and the Z-axis arm and tower are made of thicker material when compared to the competition. I mean, even the hex wrenches are noticeably higher quality when compared to the competition. Elegoo spares no expense to make sure the components are quality, and it shows in this printer. Quiet Operation This printer is quiet. The Z-axis motor is virtually silent, and really the only thing you hear in a quiet room is the exhaust fan. With the lid gasket on, the fan noise is practically imperceptible as well. I have owned many printers, and the Elegoo Mars 2 Pro is definitely the quietest one out of the bunch. Outstanding print quality. This printer produces flawless prints straight out of the box. Using the default profile in Chittabox, all you have to do is slice and print and you're good to go. The prints come out exactly as they appear in the slicer, with no printing artifacts and virtually no layer lines. I tend to find resin printing somewhat frustrating and unpredictable, but my experience with the Mars 2 Pro has been the opposite. Here's what I don't like about this printer. There isn't a lot to complain about on this printer. I prefer the USB port to be on the side so it doesn't intrude into my workspace, but that's just a matter of preference. One thing that is a personal pet peeve of mine are these carbon filter exhaust fans that manufacturers keep putting into these printers. I feel like they are a marketing gimmick, and here are a couple of reasons why I feel that way. First, in order for the system to exhaust bad air, it has to take in good air. There is no air intake on this printer. With the lid closed and the rubber seal installed, there is no air movement taking place in the printing space. Keeping the lid closed is the best way to mitigate the smell, and when the lid is off, the fan isn't able to circulate enough air to make a difference. Second, carbon gets used up as it neutralizes smells. Where is the carbon located on this machine? Is it replaceable? Do they expect us to disassemble the machine to replace the carbon? My point is, some features are just marketing devices, and if you struggle with the resin smell, you can buy low odor or water washable resin or just keep the lid on because I think that does the best job at containing the smell. The Elegoo Mars Pro 2 is a solid little machine. It is the best printer I have tested so far, and I would be willing to call it the best in its class. When you buy the Elegoo Mars 2 Pro, you get a solidly built machine that produces flawless prints with minimal effort. If you can afford it, this would be a perfect printer for beginners because it gives you the best chance of success. Thank you for watching my review of the Elegoo Mars 2 Pro. I'm very happy with this printer. 
and I think it will make my resin printing jobs a little bit more stress-free going forward. If you are interested in buying one of your own, you can use the link provided in the description below. Thank you for watching up to this point. If you enjoy this type of content, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future reviews. Also, leave any comments or questions below as I enjoy the conversations that crop up from your input. I hope you all have a great day, and I will see you guys next time.